Hello, Internet, my Parliament of Owls. You can call me Lolly. Uh, this is the first video I am filming. We'll see if I even make it to uploading it. Uh, it is July of 2020. I got a lot of time on my hands. Uh, so I'm gonna try some shit. The stakes are low. There's construction going on next door. I've already lost a nail. It's fine. Uh, today, or this video, uh, I want to talk about three books I've read recently that I like. I want to talk about them. I'm gonna make some obscure references. I don't know. We'll see how it goes. So the first book I want to talk about is Foundry Side. In my screen, this is backwards. I'm not gonna worry about it. Maybe I'll fix it in post. Uh, I borrowed this from my library and downloaded it to my Kindle. Um, it is written by Robert Jackson Bennett. Uh, I am amazed that there is not a waiting list for this book. I know that the sequel just came out and that one does have a waiting list, so I'm sure that has something to do with it. But this book was such a good time and I want more people to know about it because we need good times right now. Uh, so this is young adult, maybe? Uh, I have no notes. I haven't done any research. Whatever. Uh, a young adult fantasy that takes place in a world where magic is uh, controlled by sigils, these symbols that you inscribe on objects to basically make them uh, behave differently with reality. Um, one example is you inscribe on a wheel to convince it that it's rolling downhill, so it rolls of its own accord. Uh, you follow uh, a thief named Sanchia. Um, she has uh, abilities where she can like sense the sigils, sense the magic. Um, I'm not going to get too far into it. Um, the magic with the symbols uh, kind of reminds me of the Charter Magic from Sabriel by Garth Nix, one of my favorite books and one of my favorite magic worlds in I've ever read. This one's gonna be a close second. Um, and also the world very much reminded me of the Becca Cooper trilogy by Tamora Pierce, another one of my favorite fantasy authors. Um, and uh, when I was talking about this book with a good friend of mine he, and I was describing the magic and the way that uh, the character Clef interacts with the magic and kind of breaks the magic, uh, he turned me on to the idea that the magic very much works like computer coding. Um, you are taking a complex command or an idea and distilling it down into its most simple and complete uh, c um, wording. Because you, you can't, you don't have infinite space to write as many symbols as you want. So you kind of need to like distill the logic down. And that leads to a lot of loopholes. And that's where the fun begins. Another uh, computer coding comparison. I'm not a computer coder, so my knowledge is very surface level. But another comparison, if you've read the book or are interested in it, is they have these things called lexicons that pretty much serve like a database in terms, and so you don't have to rewrite um, the same command or explanation or definition over and over and over again. You kind of have a database of all of this stuff, and then you have one command. On, that you're, you know, in the magic, or you're referring to, that then references all of this information, and then you could just have to write that one command, that one word. Um, this book is a good fucking time. You've got uh, magic and snarky characters and uh, queer love stories. Um, I like it. I want people to know about it. Um, I kind of wish I had it. I it's a book I've read, and I want to buy it, even though I've already. Um, read it because I know I'm going to reread it. The cover is beautiful. The, the, the black and white Kindle does not do justice. Uh, so that's book number one. Um, the second book I read recently, uh, this is The Inconvenient Indian, A Curious Incident of Native People in North America by Thomas King. Uh, he is a, an American Canadian writer uh, of Cherokee heritage, like mixed Cherokee heritage. Um, so I picked this up because I, I had a, a conversation and I had a realization where I knew about 
a lot of the atrocities that Native people have experienced in North America, but I didn't really know enough about anything to talk about it. So while I'm on my reading kick, I'm going to read some shit and learn some shit. Um, so this book, uh, in his intro, he very much starts out that he's not a, he's not a historian. Um, you know, he, there's going to be a lot of bias. There's a lot of sarcasm. There's anecdotes. There's, you know, that's good for me because uh, it, it fit my attention span. And it's a good kind of like introductory, like, you want to learn about, you know, indigenous people in North America is where do you start? I think this is good. I'm not really an authority on the subject. Very little plug. Uh, when you want to learn about a subject very much, look to own voices, works and own voices, reviews. Um, but uh, what I liked about this book was it wasn't like super dense history um, date name, event, date, name, event. Um, this was very much like each chapter was a theme and then it would kind of follow uh, the history in, in the Americas and in Canada kind of of events and people and anecdotes that support that theme and then it would kind of start over again in history uh, with the next chapter. It, it, it's a good introductory. Um, a couple of good takeaways for me are um, very much reinforcing that while indigenous people in this country have a lot of common experiences and common ideas, each tribe or nation has its own very specific experiences and its own desires and goals and levels of power and history. Um, so this was a good like re reinforcing of like, yes, we should learn more about native peoples in general, but also understanding that like Coast Salish have different experiences and desires than Cherokee, than uh, Navajo, etc. Um, and it's also very important to understand the specifics of those perspectives. Um, uh, I got some good ideas about like the importance of land and the complexity of the idea of sovereignty. Um, yeah. If you've read this book, if you have other books on this other on a similar subject that kind of sound like a similar, not super stuffy historical narrative that you think I might like to pick up, let me know. Um, interesting place to start. I'm glad I picked it up. Okay, uh, last book I want to talk about is The Starless Sea. Uh, I also picked this up secondhand, and it came with a super shiny plastic cover. Um, but it's super pretty. Uh, if you've read this, uh, my introduction definitely is uh, a little uh, nod to it. This is um, an adult fantasy that I describe as, uh, like the introduction to the world feels like I'm reading a mist game with a little bit of longest journey thrown in. Um, the, the symbolism and like the parallel magical reality uh, reminds me of Garth Nix's Keys to the Kingdom series, which is a young adult series. Uh, it follows our protagonist, Zachary, as he uh, falls into the world of the Starless Sea, which and all of its harbors, which is like a huge library of books, stories, paintings, just every kind of preservation of storytelling. Um, and then there's like a bunch of like parallel stories of, and you get the impression that some of these stories are in the book that he's reading, in the book that someone else is reading, they're different perspectives. Uh, this book is, oh, I forgot to say the author. The author is Aaron Morgenstern, the author of The Night Circus, which is another book I would very much like to read. Um, shift my foot falling asleep uh so this book uh has a lot of symbolism a lot of very beautiful lush detailed descriptions of uh settings of walking into these ballrooms and these caverns and people description of what people look like um 
yeah, for, for if you just if you just love picturing super detailed, beautiful, interesting fantasy worlds, this is a this is this is also a good time. Um, the uh, also has a uh, queer romance in it. Um, I will say like maybe it's because I read this in like two two and a half days. Um, by like the last third, I think my brain got a little fatigued with the level of detail of everything being described and I kind of was impatient and just wanted things to happen. Um, but it was fine. It was, it was, you know, I didn't dislike it. I was just kind of catching myself, um, having to really refocus myself and not try to like flip through, through pages to try and get spoilers because I was in impatient. Um, I like the ending. I have not done any research on if there's going to be a sequel. I think it ended pretty well wrapped up. Um, enough like satisfying happy ending, but also a uh, vague open end ending that is very <laughs> on brand for everything that's happening in this book and talking about like the nature of storytelling and writing and preservation of stories. Um, so yeah. Those are three books that I've read recently. Um, have you read any of them? Uh, did you understand my references? Uh, would you like to make your own references in the comments below? Uh, other suggestions of things I might like? What are you reading? How are you doing? Um, all right, now I'm going to go uh, figure out if I have any editing software on my laptop if I need to download something, and I'm gonna figure that shit out. Maybe. We'll see. Um, have a good rest of your day. I hope you learned something cool. Um, wear a mask. Wash your hands. Black Lives Matter. Uh, uh, I will put a link in my description once I figure out how to do that uh, for... Um, uh, bail funds across the country because we need to do that please vote take care of yourself let's go